we've worked uh, through the last um, through the last episodes. We've worked towards the entire FACO, and now let's uh, have a look at an entire FACO. You will probably have um, managed a lot of complications. Now look at. Um, this is a tunnel. This is a not very, very clear cornea tunnel. This is quite the limbal tunnel that we have in there. Um, what we do is um, I do local anesthetic now that I inject into the eye. Um, then I put OVD into the anterior chamber and on top of the cornea. I like to put it on top of the cornea first just to get the air bubbles out um, because you don't want to have the air bubbles inside the anterior chamber. They just have a nice um, OVD filling. Now look at the direction of the side ports. I'm aiming towards the um, 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 contralateral, contralateral um, angle. angle, right? Um, you see some, some kind of limbal bleeding, meaning that I'm not very clear cornea. Which uh, is good. <laughs> which is good. Now, the cystitome, we um, do manufacture the cystitome ourselves. Um, it's not necessarily uh, an important thing to do it yourself. Um, you can do it with the forceps, with the cystitome, whatever suits you well. Um, again, the temper approach is for me, um, I think it's, it's a mandatory and standard thing. Um, and it has been discussed in the literature extensively um, regarding reduction of postoperative astigmatism. Uh, so it's very clear to do it, and there's uh, for me there's no excuse not to do it. And um, but what, whatever suits you best. Now um, regarding the capsular axis, there um, it's always good to have a clear and good red reflex. And you see that I'm not really managing that well all the time. So this is, by the way, this is this is me operating there. Um, and I think uh, ah yeah, this is real time. So hydrodissection, we've talked about that before. Hydrodissection is very important. Hydrodissection, hydrodelination um, is very important. Uh, the fake operation is one operation. If you, if you miss up the basic steps and if you try to, make, uh, to take a shortcut, it will come back to haunt you and it will bite you in the <laughs> So don't, just don't do it. Just try not doing it. Now what we're doing here is a, is a direct chop. Um, we start with um, the first groove um, and chop afterwards. After you've seen it, um, I'd rather do a direct chop because it saves phaco energy. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's a bit better on the endothelium and you have a bit more effectiveness. Now you see me there, I'm, I'm moving the eye, I'm losing center there, that's not very good. Um, I would say that I'm a bit experienced now. Um, you can see it happens to everyone, and um, I didn't really notice it happening. And you s see me there off focus. Now I'm creating my first quadrant. Lucas, what's important about, or what do you think about the quadrants there? What's your... What? Not that bad, but uh, it doesn't look that it's coming out easy, huh? No, so looking at the video now, I would say that... Are you sure it's you? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you, we just mixed something up and it's my fake, I don't know. No, it's okay. Yeah. So I think with the first quadrants, it's important to create lateral space. Um, uh, absolutely. And uh, as soon as you get it out the first quadrant, then everything goes smooth usually. Yeah. Unless you, you get into complications, because this is also when it tends to happen, no? when you're doing the FACO. At this stage of the operation, really your, your fate and the patient's fate is in the hands of the machine and um, in the machine settings. So what I'm using there, um, I came from a Venturi pump and um, I've switched to the speed mode. Um, I think the speed mode is, um, this is quite a custom thing for, for our machines. Um, as a German European, of course, we have the machines from Switzerland with the <laughs> highest mechanical precision. Um, but what the pump does, it, it, it gives you a mixture between um, the, um, the Venturi pump and the peristaltic pump. Um, and, and you just try to have the best of both worlds. I think it's very important that you have the, the aggressiveness 
and the speed of the Venturi pump with um, combined with the security and the holdability um, of, of a roller pump. Now, I've, um, I think I've switched to the speed mode. Um, we will probably post something about the speed mode in the comments, but um, I switched to the speed mode a couple of years ago. Um, I haven't looked back since. Um, now, with the, with the irrigation aspiration, what you see there is that I'm very, um, I'm very careful. I try not to manipulate um, as much with the uh, irrigation aspiration in a bimanual fashion because I don't want to rip the capsule back at this part. And uh, to be honest, most of the complications happen in the last third of the uh, cataract operation. So you need to be extra careful there. Um, and it's just uh, ve very important that you, that you are um, extra careful. Even injecting the OVD before putting in the lens. Um, there is many surgeons who don't do it. I think it's okay. Maybe you can leave a comment if you put the OVD in as a capsule to back um, support and protection. Um, but I just do it to be extra careful. Now you can see the freezing, how the freezing works and how easy it can be yeah. um, once you've done it a couple of times. But um, I think it's a, it's a bit of overhydration here. Look at the, at the corneal stroma. Whenever you get there, just try to be standardized and uh, try to have everything in tune. Um, try to have your machine settings and once you do entire FACOs, work on your machine settings. Mm -hmm.